So it's like, you know, you go with your shoulders and like that. Oh, cool. Or you could go like two steps, you know. Yeah, so it's all just rhythm and energy and smiling and keeping it going. The kind of guys that I'm attracted to, I think, are probably like, like we're honestly like a little nerdy. Like um, I tend to be drawn to ones that wear glasses and just, I think are more tall and thin. Just like good banter with me because um, I like to be funny. And so like having someone to kind of bounce back and forth with is a lot of fun. Well, you know, attraction is key. So if, you know, they're in pretty good shape and take care of themselves, have nice hair, nice smile. And someone who's just grounded, down to earth, cool, relaxed, and uh, just, you know, just fun, just laugh. Then laugh and have a good time. Your name is Mark, and this is your story. You are 35 years old. You, for work, you are a business owner, grew up in California, and your cultural ethnic background is Middle Eastern. My name is Amandeep. I'm uh, 34 years old, so you're pretty close. Business owner, well, I'm a realtor, but I have my own real estate firm, so. I grew up in California, so you got that right. <laughs> and. Uh, but I'm not Middle Eastern, I'm North Indian, so I'm Indian, yeah, so. Your name is Stephanie. This is your story. You are 28 years old. For work, you are a marketing professional. You grew up in Kansas. Uh, your cultural or ethnic background is Caucasian. My name is Sarah. Um, I am 29 years old, kind of do marketing. I do recruitment for a university, so a little bit of marketing in there, but a little mm. bit of sales too. Um, I grew up in Colorado, actually, so mm. one state right. to the west, right. but you're close. Okay. And um, yes, my background is Caucasian. Cool. Why Kansas? <laughs> I think it was your hair, your hair and your eyes. I, I think uh, it just popped out to me, Kansas. I don't know what it is. Yeah. 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 Oh, why did you think I was Middle Eastern? Yeah. Honestly, I thought Indian for a second, and uh, then I pan. I don't like. I blanked when I soon as I got there. Um, I think it's just the head wrap. Oh, the head, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. It's there it is. Totally, confusion. Totally <laughs> microaggressive. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you got to go with your gut instinct. So. Yeah, I, was, I know. Like I recognized yeah. it, and I was like, I don't. I'm not positive about it, yeah. but I can't think of anything else. So. Right now, what I'm looking for in my life is someone who can just kind of fall into step with me. Um, I think I've settled a little bit in my life. I'm done with school. I've got a good job. So I'm just kind of looking for what that next step is. And eventually, I'd like to get married and have kids. And I think uh, now is a good time to get started and try to find someone to just um, have do life with. My uh, parents, uh, they got married and they went from India to Germany uh, to Nigeria. And I was actually born in Nigeria came to uh, Brooklyn, New York when I was six months old and LA when I was one. So raised in LA my whole life, uh, as you can tell, the Valley swag. If you could only win one major award, you would want to get a Nobel Peace Prize. The most animals you've ever had at one time is two. An unexpected skill or talent you possess is uh, you play guitar. Pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding uh, if you could only win one major award, uh, it would be an Academy Award. <laughs> I've always wanted to be, uh, I've visualized being this famous actor, so I figured, you know, me with my look being on that stage, it'd be kind of fun, you know, for the world to see. So I don't know. And the most animals I've had at one time is one uh, dog. Uh, an unexpected skill or talent I uh, possess dancing. So I was dance captain in college for four years, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. All right, so your turn. If you could only win one major award, you would want to get a Nobel Peace Prize. The most animals you've had at one time is one. An unexpected skill or talent you possess is singing. Um, so I'd actually want to get an Olympic medal. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, the most animals I've had at one time is actually Two. We had two bunnies when I was growing oh, up. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they were a little psycho, so. Oh, okay, okay. We thought they were gonna be tiny, 
But they know, it's like some kind of giant bunny, so they're really? like bigger. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. So maybe your next pet would be, since you have experience with these wild animals, <laughs> maybe like a crocodile? Or no, a snake. definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, an unexpected skill or talent I have, I can touch my tongue to my nose. That's oh, wow, it. okay. Yeah. What would your Olympic medal be in? Oh gosh, I go back and forth. Summer, probably either track and field or swimming. Winter would be like snowboarding. Right. All oh, the wow. things that I wish I could do well. And the yeah. gold and all of them. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Only the best. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Tell me about the dancing. The dancing, yeah. Um, it's a uh, Indian folk dance called Bhangra. So it's like the hip hop, you know, of India. It's very energetic and it was it's a cool. lot of fun. Yeah. So I was like ranked number two in California. Uh, back then. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, you go with your shoulders and like that. Oh, cool. Or you could go like two steps, you know. Yeah, so it's all this rhythm and energy and smiling and keeping it going. <laughs> As you can see, I'm already uh, yeah. getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Is that kind of what they do like in, have you seen Slumdog Millionaire? You know, I think I'm the only Indian in the world who hasn't seen oh, it. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so I get yelled at uh, all the time, but I am so going to see I it. <laughs> Maybe we could see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I could see myself with the woman of a different religious faith. I find it important to have that compatibility and respect for one another. So, you know, you could find that with any human, you know. Being raised as a Sikh, I mean, it's really about all humans are the same. So, you know, I, I mean, you could be of a different faith, but I would look at that as a positive. I don't see myself as a stereotypical Christian girl. Uh, I don't really fall into the traditional roles of what um, like even sometimes the church wants us wants women to be. I think a woman's place in today's society is um, more as a right hand man or right next to the man. I view m marriage and as something that's equal and that we make decisions together and that he um, takes my opinions and weighs them as together and weighs them as he makes decisions and as we move forward with the family. So I said, you think one of the most important purposes of life is family. I think religion and spirituality is important in choosing a partner, or that's what you think. And when you die, you believe uh, you'll go to an afterlife. I think one of the most important purposes of life is happiness. I think religion and spirituality is important in choosing a partner. So you're right. And when I die, I believe you become one with nature. You think one of the most important purpose of life is happiness. You think religion and spirituality is important in choosing a partner. When you die, you believe you go to heaven. That's really, that's like almost spot on. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. 90%? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I do agree with the happiness. I said, fa I think family, but for me, that's like one You're of happy the same. Time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I do think it's important in choosing a partner. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I die, I do believe I'll go to heaven. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is that? Um... So you've been a good person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe there's a middle ground. In yeah, that. yeah. How does that, um, for you, when you say you're going to, like, become one with nature, what does that look like? Yeah, uh, so I'm Sikh, and uh, Sikhism is the fifth largest religion in the world. Our long hair is considered God's gift, so we tie the turban as a crown um, for our identity and to respect it. So 99.9% .9 of men you see with the turban and beard are Sikh. They're not Hindu or Muslim. We sort of believe, you know, in heaven, you know, something like that, but my dad kind of influenced me from a science level where he feels like if a deer dies in nature, like in the forest, it just, you know, par becomes part of nature and that's just, you know, there's no afterlife per se. Once my day comes to an end, you know, in this life, um, I will just be part of this world, you know, with nature and whatever my body can bring energy to the rest of the planet. So, you know, being a Christian yourself, um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how religious your family was or your upbringing, but uh, what are the deal breakers regarding that? So my dad was a pastor growing up. We weren't like super like, oh, like you can only hang out with these kind of kids. Like my parents were very like, we want you to hang out with everybody. But I think for as far as like dating and stuff, I know that like in our, what's called like equally yoked is what it, which I don't mm. like because it sounds old, but um, it's kind of like you want someone who's like the same religion. Oh, okay. Because um, for me, that's like a, it's a big part of like who I am. And so having someone who just understands that would speak volumes to me in a mm. way. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. You know, in my religion, we believe everyone's the same and we're all humans. Um, 
it's not really a deal breaker for me. But uh, obviously you want someone who's open to uh, someone who's of a different faith and uh, understanding of uh, that religion as well. So. Mm -hmm. When I first saw you, I decided that I would not date you. <laughs> and not because you're not good looking or anything like that. Mm. I just knew um, with the head wrap that you weren't, like it wasn't like a Christian thing. Mm. So mm. just first impulse, probably not. Um, but as I got to talking to you, you seem really nice and I uh, would definitely be friends with you for sure. I think mm. you'd be a lot of fun to hang out with. Okay, cool. So uh, when I first saw you, I would <laughs> to you. Um, you just seem like a nice person and I got a good vibe from you, so I figured that. Um, after talking uh, with you, um, I actually still would date you, uh, but I was reluctant because of the religious aspects, but I figured, you know, it's still good to date and get to know each other and uh, go from there, so uh, you had some good personality traits that I liked, so. Thank you, you did too. No, oh, thanks, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Doing this was a great learning experience in that uh, it kind of showed me maybe areas that I need to work on. So I think from now on, I really want to start just striking out conversations with anybody and just um, finding those commonalities. Because I think we are all human at the end of the day and I think we all are looking for a connection. People just look at, you know, uh, cultural dress or uh, skin complexion or certain eye, eye features or whatever it is. Um, and to say, oh, okay, they're from here, they're from that, that's what they do, or they're mean, they're nice, you know, so I think it's great to be different. I think it's gangster to have long hair. So I love being this way, um, but people are gonna have their assumptions, they're gonna be ignorant people, and you just gotta kinda, you know, work with them and make them realize we just don't live in a little box. It's a lot bigger place out there. So that cake.